Machine learning involves teaching systems to teach themselves to solve problems. In order to evaluate how well a computer teaches itself, we use performance measures. Depending on the type of problem, an appropriate measure is used. Say a system has a 95% accuracy. In the context of classifying shoes as Nike and not Nike, a 95% accuracy means that for every 100 shoes, 95 of them were classified correctly. This makes sense, right? It's pretty straightforward. Now consider the regression problem of determining the price of a house. If I say our system exhibits a 95% accuracy, then it means that the system accurately predicts 95 houses for every 100 houses. But does this really make sense? When is a house price considered correctly predicted? For a $600,000 house, if the predicted price is 400,000, then we can safely say that the prediction is incorrect. But what if the predicted price was $599,999? Technically, the predicted value still doesn't match the actual price and hence is also considered incorrect. But the latter prediction is certainly more correct than the former. So it makes sense to evaluate such regression type problems differently. We'll split the types of performance measures depending on the type of machine learning problem. For a classification problem, we can discuss simple accuracy, precision, recall, and the F-beta measure. This is what we're going to cover in this video. There are also some graphical methods for determining the performance of classification problems, such as receiving operating characteristic curves, or ROC curves. Also in the case of regression, we could talk about the sum of squares error, the root mean squared error, the mean absolute error, and so on. I go into more detail about classification and regression in my Introduction to Machine Learning video. Check that out if you already have it. For now, just understand that the classification involves determining the category of a sample, while regression involves predicting the value of a sample. Also, in this video, I'll only be touching on the classification type performance measures. We'll handle regression and classification performance measures in another video. Before starting with the classification performance measures, it's important to understand the confusion matrix. I'll explain this with a recurring example. Say you want to construct a system that determines if a sample shoe is either Nike or not. This is a classification problem where shoes are classified into two predefined categories, either being a Nike shoe or you're not a Nike shoe. In the table, P represents that the shoe is actually Nike. N represents that the shoe is actually not Nike. P bar represents that your system has predicted the shoe as being Nike. And N bar represents that your system has predicted the shoe is not Nike. From these two rows and columns, we have four possible outcomes. We have a true positive, which occurs when the system takes a sample Nike shoe and also classifies it as being Nike. So the system is correct. A false positive occurs when the system takes up a non-Nike shoe and says, hey, this is a Nike shoe. So the system is wrong. A false negative occurs when the system takes a Nike shoe but categorizes the shoe as not Nike. So once again, the system is incorrect. And the last state is a true negative, in which case the system takes a non-Nike shoe and designates it as not Nike. So the system is correct. If you understood everything I just said, then the next parts will be a cakewalk. Consider the performance measure of simple accuracy. You would have learned this definition in grade school, but let's redefine it here so that we're all on the same page. It is the number of samples predicted correctly divided by the total number of test samples. It's pretty straightforward, it's easy to understand and it gets the job done. So why do we need other performance measures? Isn't simple accuracy good enough to determine the performance of a classifier? It actually isn't, and here's why. Say we have 10,000 shoes that need to be classified as Nike or not Nike. Now say that of these 10,000 shoes, 9,990 of them are not Nike. They may be Adidas, Puma, Aranis, or any other brand. They're just not Nike. And say that our classifier was a simple Python program, which basically says, 
Who cares? It's not Nike. Next. The number of correct predictions will be 9,990, as this many shoes are not Nike. Only 10 of them would be predicted wrong, giving us an accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. A classifier that does no work gets an accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. This makes absolutely no sense and is thus misleading. In order to overcome this disadvantage of simple accuracy, we introduce two new measures, precision and recall. Precision states, of the number of shoes classified as Nike, what fraction of them were actually Nike? While recall states, of the number of shoes that are actually Nike, what fraction of them were classified correctly as Nike? Let's break these statements down with the help from our confusion matrix. From the precision statement, we need two quantities. First is the number of shoes classified as Nike. This is equivalent to the number of shoes that the system predicted as Nike when the shoe was actually Nike, or the number of true positives. And this value plus the number of shoes that the system predicted as Nike when the shoe was actually not Nike, or the number of false positives. Now, the second is the number of shoes that were actually Nike, when classified as Nike. This is once again the number of true positives. Precision is thus the number of true positives divided by the total number of true positives and false positives. From the recall definition, we also require two quantities. First is the number of shoes that were actually Nike. This is the number of shoes predicted Nike when the shoes were actually Nike or the number of true positives, plus the number of shoes that were predicted not Nike when the shoes were actually Nike, or the number of false negatives. And the second is the number of shoes correctly classified as Nike, of the shoes that are actually Nike. And this is once again the number of true positives. Recall is thus the number of true positives divided by the total number of true positives and false negatives. So we got precision and recall, but how exactly does this help? Let's go back to our Nike shoe classification problem and draw the confusion matrix. We talked about how of the 10,000 shoes, 9,990 of them were not Nike, and our classifier just predicts a sample shoe is not Nike all the time. A true positive occurs when a Nike shoe is predicted Nike. We know that the system never classifies a shoe as Nike. So the number of true positives is zero. A false positive occurs when a non-Nike shoe is predicted as Nike. Once again, false positives never occur because our system never predicts a shoe as Nike. So its value is zero. A false negative occurs when a Nike shoe is predicted as non-Nike. Since there are 10 Nike shoes, all of them are categorized as being non-Nike. And thus we have 10 false negatives. A true negative occurs when a non-Nike shoe is predicted as non-Nike. Since 9,990 non-Nike shoes are classified as non-Nike, we have 9,990 true negatives. Let's plug these values into the formula. Precision is technically not defined and we report that the test was extremely negative. Recall is zero, which is terrible on its own. In an ideal problem, we want both precision and recall to be one. But for the same problem, we get a simple accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. Clearly, they tell different results, but we know which one's correct. Now, let's just change the problem a bit and say that all shoes were predicted Nike instead of not Nike. So we have a new classifier with the number of true positives is 10 as 10 Nike shoes are predicted Nike. The number of false negatives and true negatives are zero as there are no non-Nike predictions. And then we have the number of false positives as 9,990 as the non-Nike shoes are now all predicted to be Nike. In this case, the accuracy is now 10 divided by 10,000. Precision is also 10 divided by 10,000. And the recall is one. The system has a high recall, but ridiculously low precision, which indicates poor performance. These measures taken together are quite accurate in determining the performance of a system. But when we want to compare different systems, 
the comparison of precision and recall, that is two values, can get pretty annoying. For example, we have a system 1 which has 70% precision and 60% recall, and let's say we have a system 2 with 80% precision and 50% recall. Which of these two is actually performing better? We can get the answer to this question by computing a single measure from precision and recall, and call it the F-beta measure. It is the weighted harmonic mean of precision and recall. Beta is a factor that determines the importance of precision over recall. Greater the beta value taken, greater is the importance that is given to precision. This value is set depending on the type of classification problem. In certain problems, a higher precision is required. This is the case while determining if a patient has cancer or not. You don't want to generate false positives and tell healthy patients that they have cancer. Nor do we want false negatives, which means telling patients with cancer that they are healthy. On the other hand, precision is not as important when dealing with the classification of shoes. Just because we determine a Nike shoe as not Nike doesn't mean it's the end of the world. In most cases. Consider the performance of our two systems on our shoe example problem. Like I mentioned before, we aren't too concerned with precision. So our beta value can be a little low. Let's make it 0.5, so we give an equal weight to both precision and recall. Now we compare the systems. System 1, with 70% precision and 60% recall, will have an F-beta measure of 0.6461, or 64.61%. While System 2, with 80% precision and 50% recall, has an F-beta measure of 0.6153. So, System 1 performs better for this type of low beta threshold problem. This measure is also known as the F measure. F measure is the same as F beta measure when beta is 0.5. That is when the precision and recall have equal contribution in determining a system's performance. But say that I want to consider the cancer problem I mentioned earlier, where higher precision is the key. Let's take the beta as 0.95 to show that we heavily consider precision. Now, system 1 with a 70% precision and 60% recall will have an F beta measure of 0.6942, while system 2 with an 80% precision and 50% recall will have an F beta measure of 0.7766. In this case, system 2 has the better performance. Thus, performance is dictated by the type of problem we want to solve. Greater is the precision that is required, greater is the beta value we're also required. And that's it! We've taken a look at precision, recall, and the F-beta measure. In future videos, we'll take a look at graphical methods of measuring performance, like the use of receiver operating characteristics, or ROC curves, then determining the area under the curve, there's also regression problems that we need to look at as well with programming examples. So yeah, lots to cover. Thought I'd keep this video a bit more specific. If you got something out of this, please share the video. Help some folks like you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos, and I'll see you in the next one.